Roger Stone, the man in the arena, you're on the air. Alex, great to be back with you. You know, it's not over till it's over. Uh, and if one looks at the AP story on what Assange says, uh, he's going to release documents for the next 10 weeks, and they are going to specifically address war, immigration, Google and what's going on there in the U.S. election. So um, I don't think anything has changed. In this case, justice delayed is not justice denied. Uh, no one ever suggested that Alex Jones or particularly Roger Stone controls Julian Assange. We just admire him. Uh, but he's going to inform the American people, evidently, on a time frame of his choosing. Uh, he's not for Donald Trump. He's not a Republican. No, no he's been very, Democrat. very bipartisan. And, and, and look, you know, he, uh, again, I, I got angry. I've apologized. Overall, his work's so great. I just didn't like sitting there hearing him say, you know, he said, I'm gonna, she'll be indicted when I release this, and then it didn't get released. But, but I talked to some sources, correct me if I'm wrong, that say he was actually threatened that you'll never get a deal if you do this. Well, not only that, he is. Uh, they have these trumped up charges against him on sexual assault, which I'm convinced is a complete frame. Yeah, he, you know, they admit two women consensual, menage a trois, then weeks later they bitch, and one of them has been connected to the Central Intelligence Agency. Right, and I know, Alex, you're you're personally jealous about the two girls, so it is <laughs> it is uh, uh, it's laughable. It's it's a joke because uh, it's a frame, and you can see that they want to lock this guy up so that he cannot expose the deep front, the deep state. But uh, nothing's really changed. I'm still highly confident uh, that he is uh, going to do what he has said he is going to do. Perhaps it won't happen in the time frame that I uh, had been made aware of, but I still have confidence. And in let's him. be clear, though, now that I know the inside baseball, he didn't jump you or anybody. He was going to do it. Everything you said followed with their tracking. He got some incredible threats. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I have this from another source, from lawyers in New York. That's when he backed off. Now he's had Sarah Harris, I want to play this clip, yesterday on Al Jazeera, this has got no coverage, it's on Infowars.com, said it will be in the next few days, here it is. A press conference, uh, Sarah Harris, and we, we were told by Julian Assange that more, more leaks were coming, more, more damaging information was coming, um, uh, he mentioned uh, Hillary Clinton, what, what, what can we expect from that over the next few days? Yeah, well, as Julian was explaining this morning, we will be starting uh, some more publications um, that will be running uh, with publications happening every few days. They'll be starting uh, in a few days. Um, and we have uh, several of them with a number of uh, interesting revelations that will be coming out uh, to do with, yes, as you just pointed out. What's interesting uh, the election, about them? But also in another number of other topics. Um, well, I'm afraid on that one I'm going to annoy you and you're going to have to wait. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, uh, that's Sarah Harris, the that was... editor. There's also a lawyer on the same show saying similar things. So, so Stone, that's good news. Uh, we want to see, quote, the information that will indict her. If he has knowledge of a crime, he needs to release it. Well, uh, reading from the Associated Press, the sign says that WikiLeaks plans to start publishing new material starting this week, meaning next week. And the significant material would address uh, war, arms, oil, Internet giant Google, the U.S. election, and mass surveillance. Yes, uh, I think uh, that this payload is coming, uh, and the uh, deep state is quaking, quaking in their boots. Now, you can't really blame Assange. He doesn't want to end up like Seth Rich, who took three in the back. At, 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 in fact, uh, it's funny. Green. It shows you may have the same sources. He was told, hey, Seth Rich got three or four bullets in the back. You better shut up. Yeah, I mean, and he now knows that Hillary Clinton actually considered using a drone to take him out. We, they've had security problems there at the Ecuadorian Bay, uh, uh, embassy. The globalists want this guy dead and quickly because he can connect the dots, and I suspect they know he can connect the dots, and that is deeply problematic for the, you know, the Bushes and the Clintons and others who have been uh, profiteering off the system while they sell out their country. And they thought the NSA would spy on us, it now spies on them. Shifting gears out of this then, what do you make of all the war with Russia talk? Is that Hillary's October surprise? Well, it could be. Look, I've said all along that the whole idea of her raising the question of Trump's coziness with Russia, a completely phony issue. Eric Trump today saying, we have no 
investments or loans whatsoever uh, in Russia. So that turns out to be an entire canard. Uh, no, I think the neocons around Hillary are committed to war. It is the policies of the Obama Clinton administration that have moved us towards war. Trump is the peace candidate. Trump favors detente with the Russians. Uh, he understands. So, how do we reach out to liberals and say your your party is a warmongering psycho group now? It's it's really it it, it is everything is kind of backwards. It's upside it's become down. Very very uh, you know Kafka esque. You're you're looking down the rabbit hole. Now um, you know we are the ones who are soft on the Russians, which is nonsense. And uh, the Democrats are, are the hardliners. I mean, it's uh, it, everything here is is bashed. Well, by soft on the Russians, we're not going to let them take over, push us around. But we're we are against nuclear war on the end of the planet. Well, and I think so, and I think so are so are they. And more importantly, we have a common enemy in ISIS who is a greater threat to both of us at the moment. It would probably be a good thing if we could get together and coordinate our efforts to destroy them. Uh, then yesterday, just proving this whole this whole continuing drama, I learned with a certainty that Jerry Nadlier, Congressman Jerry Nadlier from uh, New York, Job of the who, uh, son. Spearhead, spearheaded the effort uh, to uh, get the FBI director to investigate yours truly uh, for my non-existent uh, ties to uh, the Russians and uh, the supposition that the foreign agent Stone is talking to the foreign agent Assange. Well, I've never said that. He's not a foreign agent. I'm not a foreign agent. Uh, this, is, this is a witch hunt that Joe McCarthy would be proud of. But Nadler now admits the questions were fed to him by the money launderer, David Brock, the, uh, the incredibly short uh, and nasty hitman for the Clintons, who, by the way, whose book, The Education of Hillary Rodham, uh, you know, is the foundation for my book. He confirms, actually, he wrote it before I did, all of the criminal activities of Hillary Clinton in silencing Bill's sexual assault victims, a book he has never disavowed. Why did he switch sides? Cash, cold cash. He's a mercenary, and uh, he wasn't making enough money on the right. Meanwhile, you have uh, the hijacking of the conservative media. We now know that uh, Fox News, as you pointed out, Britt Hume at Fox News got busted yesterday using word-for-word -word verbatim uh, Media Matters for America talking points. Newsmax, once a reliable conservative organ, has been hijacked by the Clintons. The owner of Newsmax, Chris Ruddy, has given $1.5 million to the Clinton Foundation. This is the guy who wrote the, the definitive best book on Vince Why Foster. did he do that? Because he knows the Clintons are going to have scored share that shut down all of their media? Is that why well, Beck no, is groveling? Is that why Beck is groveling? Is that why Beck is groveling? Because they know it's the end game? No, in this particular case, uh, there was an email released by Assange last week that shows that Ruddy appealed to the Clintons um, to get a visa for a, a young man who's a friend of his in Panama to come and stay in the United States. So it's pay for play is what it appears to be. But people need to know Newsmax was once a conservative organ. It's now controlled by the Clintons. If that's where you're getting your news, folks, switch to Infowars.com because Newsmax is no longer run by conservatives, just like Fox News is no longer run by conservatives. These are now Clinton House organs. Oh, I mean, they'll have a show where it's the host and then a Republican Democrat, and the Republican Democrat guest will go, oh, it's ridiculous. Hillary only stumbled. She didn't fall down. We have the footage. I saw that on Bill Hemmer yesterday. I mean, they have reached that magnitude. Roger Stone's our guest. I want to ask him what's on his radar. I've been asking the questions. I want to find out what he's focused on straight ahead. Where is Trump really in the polls? What happened in the debate last night? Got a bunch of those clips as well. And then Paul Watson from His Britannic Majesty's London, England in the fourth hour. Infowars.com. There's a new Hillary Don't Tread on Me shirt limited edition. Right, we got this segment and one other, five minutes the next hour. Then Paul Watson is ready to come into the bullpen and onto the field. We are 33 days out. This is an epic time, to say the least, to be alive. Uh, I've been asking a lot of questions here, Roger Stone. What about the polls? What about the numbers? What about Hillary? What about the debate last night? I mean, wow. Uh, did Governor Pence not absolutely annihilate creepy Kane? Uh, Kane is burning down, it seems like. 
Well, I think Mike Pence did a fantastic job last night, and uh, I was very proud. You know, I've offered to step in as his body double at any time, but last night I'm glad I, I didn't because he was terrific, uh, measured, balanced comment, and he was up against uh, a rude, arrogant jerk. I mean, the likability factor in American politics is crucial. I mean, constantly being interrupted, it's just creepy. I mean, the guy is some... Uh, Buddy on a radio show was on this morning, said he looked like a child molester. I mean, the guy was sweating, nasty. Uh, this is a guy who would be working Republicans in Congress as sitting vice president. Uh, and, of course, the juxtaposition of the Kane record in Virginia, a disaster, and Pence's record uh, in, in Indiana, a model in terms of productivity and growth uh, and uh, economic prosperity, uh, it is, is uh, striking. So uh, I would just remember, remind uh, some folks that it was Paul Manafort who strongly urged the selection of Mike Pence, who arranged for Trump to meet Pence, that others in the camp at that point, Lewandowski wanted Chris Christie, think how that would have worked out. He's uh, two steps away from impeachment now that we've determined in the federal courts that he lied entirely about the George Washington Bridge covering, uh, closing. Sure, I mean, getting off Christie, I want to be clear, because there was some crosstalk in my ear. I mean, I'm not saying Kane is a child molester, but he's called Creepy Kane. Trump says he looks like a, you know, you know, absolute kook criminal. I can pull up the actual tweet. Uh, but I heard you say something about child molester. What I said was I did a radio show this morning, and a woman called in and said he looked like a child molester. I'm not saying You, you didn't know that in the first hour I said he looked like a child molester. Wow. No, I did not. So... Uh, so it is obviously uh, people uh, were, did not react well to the whole way he came across. Yeah, when people think you look like a child molester, you're not doing too good. Yeah, I would say generally speaking. And we're not true. saying he molest, uh, molest children. We're not saying that. You know, Everybody knows Caddyshack is a little know, judge smells molest see, colleagues. I tune in to see Newt Gingrich, who I thought he was on the Trump team, but he's out there criticizing Trump. Trump should have Yeah, why does Trump, Trump put up with that. Gingrich? He's criticizing him every day. I mean, Gingrich is the biggest snot-nosed Rockefeller globalist I ever saw. Ran Rockefeller's campaign in Georgia in 68. I remember specifically when Richard Nixon told me, he sniffed and said, that new Gingrich, don't trust him, he's no good. He wrote a foreword to Alvin and Heidi Toppler's book calling for world government, microchipping of the population, and the Rockefellers running everything. Yeah, Newt Gingrich, not a conservative, not a conservative. So, uh, but remember, those were your choices for vice president. Christie, who some in the Trump inner circle wanted, his, the ticket would be imploding right now had we taken him. Gingrich, he would be out criticizing the presidential candidate today. No, Mike Pence was exactly the right man. And the Trump-Pence ticket uh, is really the final, last chance for this country to survive. I honestly believe this. Is Donald Trump perfect? No. Would he tell you he's perfect? No. But he's his own man. He's a nationalist. He believes in America. Exactly. Congress. So what happens this power. Sunday? What happens with this big royal rumble with the known CIA operative Anderson Twinkle Toes, Bite Your Pillow, hosting it? Well, uh, I like Anderson Cooper. He's always been very nice to me. I just don't like his politics. Uh, and, uh, you know, since um, uh, the other night, Megyn Kelly attacked me. Uh, but they won't afford me the chance to come on. Uh, John King at CNN attacks me the other night. When asked about uh, with WikiLeaks and Stone's comments regarding Assange, he says, well, Stone probably believes in Area 51. Alex, I don't even know what Area 51 was. I had to go look it up. So, well, uh, that's it, what they it, always it, do, it, Loch Ness Monster. Let's talk about the Vanderbilt Cooper straight ahead. Back in 70 seconds, fourth hour, Infowars.com forward slash show. We have the new Hillary shirt available. Uh, Hillary and the Gadsden flag. The, the Gadsden the snake attacking Hillary for peace and loving liberalness. Infowarsstore.com. By the way, the Don't Tread on Me Hillary shirt, limited edition. We're just doing a 3,000 run, and that's it. Infowarsstore.com. The Bill Clinton rape shirt, limited edition. We're going to be ending at the uh, in 33 days. The Hillary for President shirt. It's over. Somebody else will sell it. If you want the original, InfoWarsStore.com. And we have bulk from 10 to 100 bumper stickers at cost at InfoWarsStore.com. Hillary for President, InfoWars.com. We will rush to deliver to you in the next few days. Order it. Get them out. Have an effect, especially in battleground states. I printed one million of these bumper stickers. So let's have some fun, InfoWars. We got four minutes left. Uh, you wanted to talk about the debate. Roger Stone of StoneColdTruth.com. What do you expect to see in the second presidential debate between Donald J. Trump and Hillary the Joker Clinton? Well, what's kind of
kind of interesting, of course, is that these debates are always greatly affected by the expectations. The expectations now for Hillary are very high. The expectations for Trump are suitably low, uh, and I have no doubt that he will exceed them. He uh, has got to counterpunch a little more aggressively. He's, uh, the, I, I don't care about him looking presidential. I just want him to look like Donald Trump. Just be Donald Trump. Uh, and I, I think he will do just fine. I also, if I were giving him advice on this matter, uh, and I would never talk about what advice I've ever given him, but I, I would try to ignore the extraneous attacks. No one cares about Miss Venezuela, not when Hillary Clinton has empowered you know people in the Middle East who are running around cutting women's genitals off uh, and who are stoning women. To exactly. Death. Don't defend what she makes up. Bring up the fact that you're the one that supports cutting women's genitals off. I mean, just to, so I, I would counsel him to just go in there and make his points and kind of ignore uh, the uh, the uh, absurdities that she raises. She's going Which is to debate one on one. Yeah, lecture us on cybersecurity, lecture us on mandatory minimum sentences. Please give me a break. So I, I think he's going to be uh, uh, very good in the next debate. I think he was good in the last debate. It's just that the mainstream media decided to reinterpret the debate in terms of what happened. Uh, and we've seen this before. One debate does not a, a campaign make. The mainstream media and the historians, all, virtually all liberals, try to tell you that John Kennedy put Nixon away in the first debate. Now, isn't the second or third what counts? There were four debates. Nixon won the last one. He closed fast. The momentum was with him in the final weeks, not with Kennedy. He was sitting still. And, and then they stole the Illinois goal. and Texas from Kennedy. They stole it from him. Nixon won that race by scoring in the fourth debate, but that's been airbrushed out of history. But they admit he did steal Texas and Illinois. Oh, there's no question. Kennedy had to steal it because Kennedy, the, the late momentum was with Nixon. Eisenhower did momentous rallies in, in New York, Philadelphia, and L.A. Nixon was on his game. He had hoarded his money till the end. He outspent Kennedy in the stretch, and he won that race by a hair, and they stole it from him. Why? Because he won the fourth debate. He also won two and three. And that brings me in closing the, the steal. Debate. They admit the they're TV federalizing. Race. They admit they're federalizing the debate. What do we do about that? How do we fight that? Yeah, look, the debate has been rigged from the beginning. You know my strong feeling that the Libertarian Green Party candidates should be in there, both as a matter of what is right, but also if you just want to make the hard-headed political calculation, Johnson plus Stein is net negative Hillary. Johnson plus Stein is net negative Hillary. We should have, Trump from the beginning should have insisted that they be in the debate or he wouldn't show up. I agree, but what do we do about election fraud? Well, uh, again, I would urge people who are concerned about this to go to stopthesteal.org. We are about to unveil uh, our exit poll uh, program, which is entirely net-based. It's very sophisticated. We're doing our targeting right now. I would call it science poll or mega poll or something like that. Well, we can talk about that, but the concept, of course, is to get actual voters to tell us how they voted, not how they're going to vote, but how they voted on a very uh, uh, targeted precinct by precinct, machine by machine basis, so we can detect, detect fraud by comparing the exit results with the actual All right, we'll talk tomorrow results. about this, Roger, a quickening happening. Thank you, Roger Stone, StoneCultures.com. We'll talk to you very soon. Get his Bill Clinton rape shirt at InfoWarsStore.com. Thank you. I'll come back and introduce Paul Watson. Stay with us. Thank you, Roger Stone. Huge time to be alive. Great to be here.